Welcome to Aboriginal Art in America, a podcast where each week we spend a few minutes with a work by an Indigenous Australian artist. I'm joined today by Henry Skerritt, curator of the Kluge Roo Aboriginal Art Collection. And today we are actually here at the Kluge Roo, surrounded by some really incredible works that are about to go on public display. Can you tell us about this exhibit, Henry? Um, yeah, this is a really exciting exhibition for us. It's called Iriticha Kuari Jungu, which means past and present together. And the exhibition celebrates 50 years of Papanya Tula artists, which was the very first, I guess you'd say artists cooperative or artists company uh, of Aboriginal artists working in the, the central desert of Australia. When Papanya Tula is formed in, in, in 1972, it's formed at a place called Papanya. Right? And Papanya was founded in 1959. It's a government settlement. So they create this place where they're bringing together desert people from all these different language groups, about six different language groups. And for some of them, it's the first time they've ever had to live in close contact with white Australians. But it's also the first time for any of these people that they're forced to live in such close proximity to people from other Aboriginal language groups. And so you get this bubbling kind of cosmopolitan place with enormous amounts of social dysfunction where, you know, I think a lot of those old men were really trying to say who they were, right? So painting gave them this sense of legitimacy, this sense of authority. It was about expressing who they were amidst this really complicated melange of strangers. And so I think that's what a lot of these paintings are about, right? They're about asserting who you were. And you can't overstate the impact that Papanya Tula artists has had on the world of Indigenous arts. So why is this region so special? Why did you all want to do a whole exhibition about it? So for many people, I mean, what's the first thing they think about when they think about Aboriginal art? Dots. Dots, <laughs> right? People think about dots, like dot painting. But dot painting is really synonymous with desert painting. And that whole desert painting movement, this movement that took on the world, that, that, that you know, produced all these epically large works and, and huge artistic statements, it all really begins at Papanya Tula in 1971. And what happens in 1971 is a group of men, and they are all men at that point, begin to paint their ancestral designs on whatever scraps they can find. And, you know, these guys are really determined to get their art out there. And so you'll see in this exhibition, like we've got works of art that are painted on linoleum tiles and we've got bits that are painted on, you know, scraps of fibro. We've even got one that's on a... Um, piece of cardboard that came out of the inside of a car door because these guys were just using anything they could to get these paintings out into the world and from those humble beginnings you'll see it just blooms so quickly uh, into this incredible movement that that really does change the way in which people think about indigenous art all around the world and Papanya Tula has been remarkable at generating income for these remote communities. Papanya Tula Artists these days, I'm told, brings in over $2 million annually. And they use the profits from their company, the Indigenous directors and shareholders of the company, use the profits to invest in community development. They've built a swimming pool at the community at Wollongaroo. They fund dialysis services at both Kintor and Kiwakura. Papanya Tula artists showed that Indigenous people could band together, they could create a company that could support their ambitions to be on country. Right? And that's the most powerful message. It's a message of self-determination. It's a message that says we can hold our culture strong and we can engage with the world, whether that be galleries in New York City or collectors like John Kluge, you know, we can engage with them using our culture, but we can use that to allow us to stay home, to live where we want to live. So when can people come and see this exhibit? 
So this exhibition is opening on the 24th of June and it's running through until February. And then in March, we'll be opening the second part, this 1996 through to the present. You know, so we're, we're committing to, to, you know, 18 months of Papanya Tula in Charlottesville, which is, seems incredible. That's a lot of time. But, you know, this is a big milestone, 50 years. That's a birthday worth celebrating, I think. You can make a reservation to see this exhibit at kluge-ru.org. Aboriginal Art in America is a production of the University of Virginia and a member of the Virginia Audio Collective. Listen and subscribe at virginiaaudio.org.